logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. I'm going to give y'all guys an update, a detailed update on Hurricane Hector and, uh, well, and the uh, Kilauea Volcano. A lot of uh, interesting details I'm going to give you. What you're looking at here is the current path of Hector. Um, at the moment, it is making still a beeline. It's heading uh, west northwest and making a direct beeline for the island. Right now, it's still heading directly for Hawaii. It's almost like aiming at Kilauea. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so, Hector is uh, currently a Cat Four with uh, maximum sustained winds of 155 miles an hour. Sustained winds of 155 mile an hour. That's pretty heavy duty. It's currently centered at 15.2 north, 143.1 west. Okay. Uh, actually, these coordinates are a little old, but this is the most recent that was available on NOAA. Um, I would suspect that it's on actually more along the lines of in here somewhere. But uh, the, the these satellite images, however, are of today and its movement of today as of about uh, a couple hours ago. And uh, again, it is on a direct path and movement towards Hawaii, as you can see here. I've uh, placed a line in here. From where the eye was at, where the eyes moved to, and followed it direct down the center, and it's going directly at Hawaii. Okay. Um, another thing I'd want to point out is a few of you will understand this, and I'll come back to this maybe here in a bit, but um, it is due to make it to Hawaii, okay, at 8 a.m. on the eighth day. Of the eighth month of the eighteenth year, okay. Just saying, okay. Now, some of you will be wondering what the heck is he talking about there, but let me show you a couple things here. Um, this, my prediction is, is that the hurricane is going to continue on this path and it's going to hit Hawaii, okay. You you got some models out there that are saying that it's going to go a little to the south, and most of your weathermen are pretty much following that. Hey, Mockingbird. Hey, Lynn Begley. Hey, TJ. And uh, but I, I'm I'm going to say I'm going to go against the grain, and I'm going to say this hurricane's going to hit Hawaii. But I'm going to show you why it's not it's just it's not just a hunch. It's it's based on actually some information. I'm going to show it to you here. I want to show you what drives a hurricane what makes a hurricane steer and then I'm going to show you what the current steering winds are that are steering the hurricane okay let me read this to you it says so just to give you an idea a very weak tropical cyclone will follow the flow steering steered by the lower level winds okay lower level winds uh, and a very strong tropical cyclone will follow the flow steered by the higher level winds. Okay? All right. So a weak hurricane gets steered by the winds that are on, lo on the lower level near the surface. A very strong Cap 4 hurricane gets steered by the upper level winds. All right. Now, what you're looking at here is a map of the current uh, upper level upper level winds that are uh, happening around the hurricane and out at Hawaii. Okay, you can see, <coughs> excuse me, that the uh, hurricane is following the path still of the uh, upper level winds that you can see pointing here in the uh, area. Let me see if I can zoom this in. No, 
Nope. <laughs> okay, so let's see. No other zoom in. Okay. Well, what we've got is we've got these winds that are pointing north, or excuse me, uh, west, northwest. And then as you reach Hawaii, the winds turn to the north. Okay. So what this hurricane's going to do, um, assuming it maintains as a stronger hurricane, Cat 4, Cat 3, maybe even a Cat 2, uh, the stronger the hurricane is when it reaches Hawaii, the more likely what's going to happen that I'm going to tell you here. Um, as, we, as I said, and as I showed you, it's heading directly beeline for Hawaii right now. When it gets there, you can see that the upper level winds, you can go in full screen and see this better, the upper level winds turn and go to the north, okay? So this hurricane, if it stays fairly strong, uh, and there are currently no shear winds affecting the hurricane, so it is going to stay strong for now. Uh, they predicted at this point it would have dropped back down. It did not. It intensified to a cap four. So it's going to come along. Let me uh, let's see if I've got a little. Actually, that won't work. It's going to come. You can see my mouse. It's going to come along here straight into towards Hawaii. This is my prediction. And once it hits Hawaii, it's going to turn to the north. But it's going to stay just like it is until it hits Hawaii. It's going to continue on its path and make a beeline right into Hawaii. If anything, slightly to to the south, just a little teeny bit. But it's got to turn in order to even go to the south, just a little teeny bit. The upper level winds as you can see here, just on the other side of Hawaii, of the uh, chain of islands coming out here, are going to the north. That's what controls a hurricane of this size, the upper level winds, okay? And what we're looking at here are the upper level winds, okay? So, my prediction is, She's going into, it, it, Hector's going to Hawaii. He's going on vacation. And if it goes in at a Cat 4, obviously a Cat 4 with, with the kind of winds that come along with a Cat 4, I mean, 155 mile an hour winds, that's heavy duty. You're talking about severe, severe destruction. Now, you would think that likelihood is, is that Hector would weaken. And it probably will weaken some, I'm guessing. But right as it approaches Hawaii, we might get a burst of energy, okay? And the reason why I say that, I'll, I'll show you here, okay? Um, for one, the water temperature around Hawaii is hotter. Let me see if I've got the thing I'm looking for here. Yeah, here we go. Um, I assume it's because of the volcanic activity, um, but you can see, see this orange area through here? The hurricane's currently in this type of area right in here, where it's similar colors to what is around Hawaii, okay? The brighter colors, yellows and stuff, is cooler water temperatures, and the orange going into red is hotter water. Okay, it's back over in here in this orange area. You can see it might go through a little bit of fading into some yellows, but then when it gets right to Hawaii, let me zoom on in here. You see how all this see all this dark orange turning red right around the islands? This over here too. I don't, I'm not sure that the lava going into the ocean would have a great enough effect, to be quite honest with you, to have changed the temperatures of the water. Or, of course, it would right close to the lava, but you're talking about a huge ocean here. But for some reason, the temperature right around Hawaii is elevated, right? Especially this area through here, okay? So we might get a burst of energy, not to mention that there is still a lot of of residual heat coming off of that lava. There's a huge lava field laying out there. 
and you can't walk on it still. You know, um, y'all guys might have heard that Fisher 8, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, Fisher 8 uh, has stopped producing lava. It stopped flowing. And I had uh, predicted that this was going to happen. Of course, it would happen at some point. But um, I'm going to show you what it kind of means um, relevant to the volcano and such and what it looks like. I've even got you, uh, you might say, somewhat of a rudimentary drawing uh, put together that you can take a look at here in a few minutes and see what it ultimately is going to mean. Let's see here. I had a couple of other things put here for you to look at. This is a wider view of the overall area. And I want to show you this right here too. You can see, visually see what I'm talking about, about the, the upper level winds. You see these, uh, this is a water vapor map. Okay. See as you approach Hawaii, everything, all this air is moving straight at Hawaii. Okay. When you reach Hawaii, right as you cross into the middle of the islands, everything turns and goes north. Of course, you got this area over here that's showing you that everything is feeding north. Okay. So when the hurricane comes in here and runs into this, it's going to turn north. And because it's steered by the upper level winds, which is what this map is a vapor, water vapor map, upper level winds map type thing. Um, this is just showing you that the current vapor, water vapor, is making that move, beeline and straight ahead to Hawaii, and then turn into the north as you pass the main island. Okay? So I suspect what it's going to do is it's going to hit the main island of Hawaii and then turn north and go right across the smaller islands like Honolulu and so on. Okay? Uh, hey, Lynn, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, hey, Captain Crismo, Demon Hunters, hey. Welcome to the uh, show, buddy. And uh, Captain Charisma, Mockingbird. Um, let me show you a few more things. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you the current models, too, as well, and a few other things. This is the wider view I was talking about. We've got one. There's actually one to the south of here, right down here, there's a storm that's, you can kind of see it coming up right right here. It's uh, a couple of the models are predicting this storm that's southwest of Hector to turn into a hurricane and actually trek to the north. It's going to come, supposedly it's supposed to come up right along here and merge with uh, Hector. Come up through here merge with Hector and do a spinning dance right over the islands. That would be amazing if that happened. Here are some of the other models that are out there. I've looked at all of them. Um, the different sites and everything. I've went through a bunch of the ones that I haven't, I'm not even showing here. Um, and, and these are all following the model data, computer data, saying it's going to go to the south. I'm saying it's going to go direct in. And I'm not saying that because that's what I want to happen. That would be not good news for that to happen, and I don't wish harm on nobody. Um, here's This is about what I think is going to happen right here. This model has pretty much got my agrees with me. And this is a new model as of today. Let's see what it's saying. Um, as far as the only thing I don't agree with with this model is that there's a lot of upper winds that are going to make it turn here. So I don't agree with that because how is this hurricane going to continue and plow into this area right here? and not be forced north okay see all this storms going north how's the hurricane just gonna bust through there it ain't gonna do it it's gonna come here and it's gonna cause it to turn so this this uh model is right and wrong i'd say 
Okay. Now we've got some other models. Here's another model taking it a little bit to the south. This would still be a, a hit. <coughs> Here's something I want to show you guys too that I found interesting. Just an observation that, well, let's look at this one here. You notice the island of Hawaii creates its own uh, pressure system. See the lines, the little circles that the computer is placing in on the big island of Hawaii? You can see it right there. The little, little lines. Over here as well. Uh, let's see which one is it. This one right here. Well, this is the see that right there. See that? Uh, let me see if I can slow this down. Uh, I don't have my controls right there. So, okay. See this other hurricane coming up, and it swings in, and mixes in with that hurricane, with Hector. This one coming up from below. But what I'm pointing out here is, let me see if I can zoom it in. See the little lines in here? Something about Hawaii is causing it to create a low pressure spot. Its own low pressure. And I do know that, that I doubt it would make a big difference, but if a if this tropical or this hurricane approaches Hawaii and it is a, and there's a lower pressure area for it to go it's going to go into it so the closer it gets to Hawaii the more likely it's going to strike it like a magnet because Hawaii is for some reason is creating a low pressure You see it there? The little circles. That's indicating that the pressure on the island reduce is reduced pressure for some reason. I don't know why. I assume it has something to do with the volcano, but I don't understand it. Okay. Got a couple more things to show you here. Um, Tomorrow they are planning, let's see, to do, I guess, three three flights uh, the National Hurricane Center is going to do three flights over the hurricane and uh, let's see one flight morning time midday and of course afternoon going to do three different flights so we should get some good updates on the center of the hurricane exactly where it's at okay and here's the last model say one of the last models saying that it's going to go across to the south and which it may but I'm going to buck the club and say that it's not okay uh, let's see this right here is a favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development or if you've got a, a hurricane or a cyclone or a tropical storm um, it would provide improved conditions for it. And this is uh, the 12 hour forecast, the 24 hour forecast, and the 48, which would put us on Wednesday. Okay. As you notice, on Wednesday going into Thursday, the island of Hawaii over here The conditions approve, improve each day. Conditions improve closer to Hawaii and right over Hawaii. It even looks like there's a little spiraling hurricane right there in the conditions map. Huh. Okay. All right. Now, let's go back over here. And... I wanted to show you, talk to you about one of the dangers, and I mentioned this a little bit on a previous video. I'm going to go full screen here for a minute, guys. Um, 
one of the dangers of this hurricane hitting Hawaii is the massive amount of water coming coming down onto the caldera. Okay, you've got a lot of magma down there. We know it's there. We know it's hot. It's been flowing up from the core and going out into the rift zone. Well, now the plug, which is that dirt that's been caving in and having collapses, that plug has went down far enough that it's cut off the flow to the rift. Okay, so the pl plug has been put in. And there's ramifications to this change, but one thing is, is that when the amount of water flows into this caldera, and this caldera is two miles across, and when you have a two mile square, actually round area, and all the water is going to run downhill towards the center of the caldera and down the throat of this volcano. And as so, what's going to happen, uh, or to be uh, pretty uh, potentially dangerous, I guess you'd say. What I did was I put together a drawing of the uh, of the rift zone coming out from the volcano of the caldera and of the throat of the volcano going down and uh, painted it in for you so you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you uh, some more here in a sec. Okay, let's get some water. Now, as this uh, caldera fills up with water, not fills up, but as it gets a lot of water in it, let's uh, let's change our brush here real quick. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay, so we got a lot of water coming in here, and of course, it's all coming kind of downhill into the center of the caldera because everything's been collapsing in the center and sinking further and further down. Well, as that happens, we're going to have another situation, which is going to be the water is going to start permeating and making its way down into the throat of that volcano. So a two mile wide area of, of surface water is going to start working its way down into that caldera like illustrated here and as it does it's going to start steaming a lot um, and the worst if you're watching that live cam they have the more steam we see happening uh, more of an indication that there's a threat coming of this thing having a explosion in a pyroclastic flow and the reason why it can have a pyroclastic flow right now is because the throat is full of debris. Before, when the we could see the lava and it started collapsing, it was having these steam explosions. It had some of those that went up to like uh, 20,000 feet, I think. But there was nothing in the throat of the volcano but lava and water that was getting into it causing steam explosions. Well, now we have the possibility of a pyroclastic flow because what it'll do is, is all this material that has went down the throat, when that water gets down there and it gets hot enough and hot enough and there's enough water, it'll have a, a hydrovolcanic explosion. Just like they had when the volcano, when the uh, boat was offshore, when that tourist boat was offshore and they were looking at the lava entering into the sea and all of a sudden there was a big huge explosion that came out of nowhere and what happened was is that there, there was a tube that, let's say this is the shoreline here okay and the lava was coming off and it had ran under the water let's say this is the water line it ran under the water and it had created its own little tube you might say and hardened on the outside as it went. So as it progressed, the tube got longer and longer and longer. And then something changed probably in the flow rate of the lava, and it cracked. And when it cracked, water rushed into into the uh, volcano, or into the, uh, excuse me, into this tube that developed underwater, caused a 
hydrovolcanic explosion. And it was pretty massive explosion. For those of you that seen the video, it's still on YouTube. But that's what we got going on over here. The difference is, or potentially we could have going on over here, the difference is, is that, uh, well, we got a whole lot more magma. And we got a two-mile surface area of all the water for that whole two-mile round area uh, going down the center of this volcano until it hits this magma down here. Now, I'm going to do another video here in the next uh, couple of days as to what's go what, I, what I think is going to happen next with the volcano, assuming we don't have a... Uh, hydrovolcanic explosion if we don't have that or even if we do I'll be back talking about it uh, so you guys can you know keep up with what's going on right this, this is something that I kind of well I do it for a living right I study it all the time so that's really about it guys I just wanted to let you know what what I see with the hurricane and why I think it's going to do what it's going to do <coughs> and I told y'all guys um, some of you remember from the last video that that and some of you that have been around for a while know that I study gematria which is gematria is the language of numbers and letters and uh, gematria, in gematria you haven't heard me say it already. Um, Hector in Gematria equals Kilauea. Yep. Hector equals Kilauea. And uh, y'all guys that have been around for a while too know that the elites are heavily tagging things uh, numerically wise with the numbers 8, 88, 888, or divisions of 8, like 44 and so on okay they're massively painting that number all over all kinds of things like for instance Trump he had Trump had uh, 88 campaign stops and he had 88 campaign offices and he had 88 million dollars of his own money used in the, his campaign those are things you can look up and verify and and there's a long laundry list of 88s when it comes to Trump including in Gematria Trump means or equals 88 Donald J. Trump equals 888, 38s, okay? Now we got this Hurricane Hector in Gematria, meaning Kilauea, and it's going to be in Hawaii to strike at 8 a.m. on the 8th day of the 8th month of the 18th year. I can't find that nothing but fascinating. Guys, if you're new to my channel, you know, please subscribe and uh, you'll always find me here and I go into depth I'm doing a lot of live stuff lately although I do do recorded edited videos as well a um, couple of things I'm trying to do to raise funds if anybody here happens to a couple of things I have skills at one is editing video If anybody happens to have video they want to edit or put together I'd be happy to provide you a quote for doing something like that. And I'm sure I'd do it way cheaper than you can get it done anywhere else. And uh, uh, also, if you need any anything looked into, you want to know, got, need to know something about something. Maybe you want to know everything about you that's on the Internet. What could somebody find out about you? I can find that out for you. Um, if you got somebody you won't looked into, you want to know the details on somebody. Maybe you, there's a company you won't looked into. Maybe there's something that you'd like to know the truth about. Well, I'm for hire. Okay. Also, this is a publicly funded YouTube channel because YouTube don't fund it. And the links are down below to where you can uh, be a Patreon for me if you'd like. Contribute a dollar a month or five dollars a month or whatever. And you'll never miss it. And uh, if you don't donate it, I will miss it because it uh, it is not a good thing to be a truther in this world. It pays like crap. Um, this career is the lowest paying career on the planet, I think. Um, a couple of y'all guys made a couple of donations recently, 
and uh, I appreciate them very much. Thank you uh, for doing that. And uh, also, you can use PayPal if you like to be a, a uh, make a donation one time. Uh, you can just uh, send it to logic before authority at gmail dot com. So you go to PayPal, sign up, take you five minutes, and it'll ask you what email address you want to send it to, and you want to send it to logic before authority at gmail. Guys, I'm going to cut the show here tonight. Uh, it's going on midnight where I'm at. Uh, I'm going to go to bed. I've been researching this all day long to get it ready for y'all guys. And uh, I'm a little tired. So I appreciate y'all guys being here. Not everybody has the ability to donate. And uh, if you don't have the ability, don't sweat it. You know, and if and don't donate if you don't have extra funds. And if you do have extra funds and you sit here and you take this information in and appreciate it and want more of it, consider making a donation if you've got those kind of funds. Because I'm not living a luscious life here. You know, I am clearly right at the moment things are not good. So, and anyways, I'd appreciate it. Guys, I'm going to let you go. Have a great evening. Make sure to say your prayers. And remember to always use logic before authority. Logic before authority.